As COVID cases are finally going down, I thought it was time for a quick update about COVID and pregnancy. Do you really need that vaccine? Can you wait till after pregnancy? Do you need a booster? How bad is it? I've got 10 quick updates in 10 minutes or less, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author and educator. And today we're talking about COVID and pregnancy. I did a video beforehand about how I felt about the vaccine that was from a while ago. You can go ahead and check it out up here. And I still think if you are struggling with whether or not you want to get the vaccine, it can be helpful to watch, understanding what a doctor and a mom going through these things, what I felt. But it's time for an update because the game has changed a bit. And honestly, for the better. Numbers are going down, hospitalizations are going down. So I think it's time for us to regroup and readdress what it means to have COVID in pregnancy, especially when it comes to the Omicron strain. What about that new subvariant of Omicron? And do you really need a vaccine? So let's get started. Before I dive in, I do wanna say that I am a doctor, I'm not your doctor. This does not replace individualized medical advice with your healthcare provider. And everything that I'm saying today is current as of today, March 14th, 2022. As we know, things change quickly. So as we update this, I will update things in the show notes section, but just keep that in mind if you're watching this like six months from now which hopefully we're not, but there we are. First things first, I do want you to remember that COVID is not over. Our past seven day average in the United States is about 36,000 new cases a day with 1,200 people dying every day from it. So this is still with us. And good news, I have everything referenced in my show notes below, whether you are a pregnant person or a healthcare provider and you want more information. I have spent a lot of time putting this list together. So you can go down there to see all the references and the images that I'm sharing here today. First question, is COVID really still that bad in pregnancy? And the answer is yes. And you can see from this graph here that if you get COVID in pregnancy, you are at an increased risk of dying, of preeclampsia, of giving birth early. That's why that risk of your baby going to the NICU is so much higher and of stillbirth, which is a rare occurrence, thankfully, but still increased if you have COVID, especially around the time of delivery. So for those people who are walking around and saying, yeah, it's just the flu. You know what? The flu is actually really bad for pregnant people too. Question two, as hospitalizations and death go down, does vaccination really matter in pregnancy? And the answer is yes, there is a reason that we are seeing declining numbers and it's because of vaccination. It's because that more people are protected, they are less likely to be a reservoir for the infection and they are less likely to spread it. And if you still do get COVID while you're vaccinated, you're less likely to end up in the hospital or to die from it. And in pregnancy, we know that decreasing your chance of getting severe disease with vaccination is so important. When it comes to which vaccine to get, we are still recommending the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccines as they have shown to be more efficacious and also have less side effects than the Johnson & Johnson, especially in women of reproductive age. Question three, do I really need a booster? Yes, that is so key when it comes to full protection. And you can see in this graphic here, just when you would be due for your booster. So at five months, if you've completed your Moderna or Pfizer vaccination series, and at two months, if you've had your Johnson & Johnson, and it's okay to mix and match. But absolutely, all the data shows us that when we look at people who are unvaccinated versus partially vaccinated versus fully vaccinated but not boosted versus people who are vaccinated and boosted, it's those in the last group that do the best. So absolutely yes. Question four, will my baby have immunity if I'm vaccinated or if I got COVID while pregnant or if I'm breastfeeding? And the answer is yes, and that's awesome, especially for those of you with under fives who your kids are not eligible for vaccination yet. This is a great way to cheat the system. If you get vaccinated in pregnancy or if you get sick in pregnancy, but we'll circle back, then you are passing antibodies onto your baby while you're pregnant. But as you can see from this graph here, it is much better to be vaccinated in pregnancy because there are higher antibody levels that we see in babies born to those people as opposed to if you just got COVID in pregnancy. So I don't want you to rely on your natural immunity in terms of being able to pass on the most antibodies. And yes, we have studies to show that antibodies are passed in breast milk and that's amazing and awesome. So if you are vaccinated and breastfeeding, you are once again cheating the system and that's great. Question five. And this is one I feel like we're still talking about. Is it safe to get the vaccine while you are trying to conceive? Will it affect your fertility when you're trying to get pregnant or long-term fertility? And the answer is absolutely not. This original message that went out there that said that the vaccine could somehow harm your fertility or harm your ovaries, it's total BS and it's been debunked. We have to lean on the science and the science says this is not true. Here's some things to help you feel better. In the vaccine, there's no virus. It doesn't enter the nucleus of your cell. It doesn't change your DNA. It is very quickly degraded from the tissue where it's injected. So there's no way it's getting to your ovaries. And we have studies to confirm this with references down below 
from doctors who treat people with infertility and do fertility treatments. And they've shown that there's no difference in the quality of the eggs, the number of the eggs, how healthy the ovaries are, sperm quality or quantity in people who are vaccinated. And in fact, lots of fertility physicians are requiring or strongly recommending that people who want to do IVF and those kinds of treatments are fully vaccinated before they do those treatments because nothing harms a pregnancy or your fertility worse than getting really sick from something like COVID. And question six, is it safe to get the vaccine in pregnancy? Will it cause a miscarriage or a stillbirth? And the answer is absolutely not. And again, for the reasons that there's no biologic reason for a vaccine to be able to do that, and these vaccines included, we now have data to show that when we've compared people who've gotten the vaccine to the statistics that we know exist for things like miscarriage and stillbirth, there was no difference. And this table shows that here. And so you can rest assured that we are seeing no complications of that. 11 billion doses, and that's with a B, doses of the COVID vaccine have been given out worldwide. With that very high number of doses being given out, we would see an uptick in rare complications like stillbirth and miscarriage and that sort of thing if it was linked to the vaccine. It is simply not. And for people who have heard, well, I hear that you can get a fever with the vaccine and that can damage baby's development, fevers are easily treated with Tylenol and it's a short-term effect and it is definitely less of an immune response than you would get if you were actually sick from something like COVID itself. Question seven, and this is one I hear a lot, what about the long-term effects of the vaccine? How can we know? Let's backtrack and remember that the mRNA vaccine technology, it's been around for 20 years. And the technology that we use to develop Johnson & Johnson is not new either. So these may seem new, but they're not that new. This is some really cool perspective. No vaccine in the history of vaccines, so we're talking now a really long time, has ever had an adverse effect that has shown up past eight weeks. That means that if there's gonna be one, we would have seen it already. And we continue to collect data, and I, I think that's super important, but we also have to think what is more likely, a long-term effect of something like COVID or long COVID versus a vaccine that is exquisitely well-studied. And once again, we have never ever seen anything long-term of this nature. So I think it's really about weighing your risks and benefits and understanding the science behind it. Okay, let's say you get COVID. What is delivering with COVID like in the hospital? I do wanna do an update here. Most hospitals are still requiring universal masking of their healthcare providers. And I think that makes absolute sense and I'm totally fine with that. But if you are diagnosed with COVID, either because you were screened on admission on labor and delivery or you've had symptoms and now you're in labor, the good news is that you can still have a normal healthy birth. We'll wear extra gear in terms of masks and what we call PPE or personal protective equipment, but you and your baby should not be separated. And hospitals that are routinely separating babies from their parents because of COVID, that should not happen. And all leading organizations say this, and I don't think that's happening in most places, but if it is, You've got references down below to say why this should not happen. So we still recommend that babies stay with their birthing parents because we know that things like skin to skin and breastfeeding, all this stuff can be done safely with a decreased risk of transmission. As of this time, visitors are still limited in most hospitals, but it's important for you to check in with your obstetric provider to see what your local regulations are. And that leads to number nine. What about babies who are exposed to COVID while they are in the uterus? What are the long-term effects? The good news is that transmission from the pregnant person to the baby is very rare, meaning that it's really unlikely that it's going to cross the placenta. We do see some in risk of infection after birth, but it's probably related to you know being in the environment with somebody who's actively has COVID. That's why good hand hygiene and wearing masks, that kind of thing is really important. But in terms of long-term effects, like developmental effects from being exposed to COVID while you're in the uterus developing, we just don't know that yet. And that's something that we're not gonna know for a long time. This is why being able to prevent getting COVID or at least decrease your chance of getting COVID or at least decrease your chance of getting severe COVID via vaccination is really important. Okay, number 10. What about this new subvariant of Omicron BA2? It's in the news. Keep in mind, this information is up to date as of today when I'm filming March 14th. So we know that cases are increasing worldwide, that the number of cases that are this subvariant is going up and we're seeing it first in Europe. And yes, we will probably track behind as we've done in all strains so far. And we know that it's more infectious, but it doesn't appear to be like Delta as severe, but it is more infectious. What's really exciting is that for the first time ever in the UK, we are seeing that COVID right now is as severe as the flu, meaning not more so. Up until this point, COVID has been more severe, has been associated with more death than the seasonal flu. Why is that? Well, because of vaccinations, because of herd immunity of people who have also gotten COVID. But keep in mind, that's not going to last as long as vaccine-induced immunity. And number three, because of variants, we know that Omicron isn't as severe. And we are hoping that that trend stays the same with this subvariant, but we're still figuring that out. 
it's not a time to get complacent and say, well, screw it. I'm not going to vaccinate because it doesn't seem so bad. I heard Dr. Jen say, well, it's basically just the flu. No, it, it is like the flu, which is great. But remember, so far it's not seasonal and we just don't know where it's going to take us. We're heading in a good direction, but it's because of things like vaccines. And I will throw in a bonus number 11. What about antivirals and treatments for COVID while in pregnancy? And the good news is, is that a lot of these treatments are safe. It's just about what your hospital has local access to, where you are in your pregnancy, how severe the symptoms are. So if that's the case, your obstetric provider can work with a high-risk OBGYN or infectious disease physicians to figure out what's, what's best for you. Okay, so to wrap this all up, yay, COVID numbers are getting better but it's still dangerous in pregnancy. The good news is we have things to decrease your chance of getting it like masks and vaccines. And if you do end up getting it, it'll be less severe if you are vaccinated. You get to pass on antibodies to your baby if you get vaccinated and you're breastfeeding, which is awesome. And we know that vaccinations decrease the chance that your baby is even going to end up being hospitalized with COVID in the first six months of their life. So lots of really good information. References and resources below. If you've got other questions or concerns or you wanna drop a comment, go ahead and do that in the comment section. If you wanna follow me, on Instagram or TikTok. I'm at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln for more. All right, everybody, stay safe out there, okay?